guys, it's James here from the Escape Route, and uh, here we are. It's a rainy, cloudy March day, but we're thinking about summer, and I'm fortunate enough to be here with John Hippard, who is the founder of Red Paddleboard. So John's come over from across the pond from England to come and see us, and thank you, John. I really appreciate you being welcome. here. Um, you all right if we kind of have a, just a bit of a chat about sure. the company? yeah, absolutely. Red's, um, Red's been an awesome company for us to deal with. We're, we're super happy to be able to showcase them in the corridor and for Canada. It's a company that is, um, it, it's an innovation leader in a lot of ways. I think that, that word focus is the key thing. You know, that's, we are, we are focused in doing paddleboard kit and associated accessories. We're not distracted with, you know, whether it would be kiting or foiling or, or windsurfing. And for me, it's, it's driven by passion. Uh, mm -hmm. And I uh, spent a long time windsurfing as a professional windsurfer, which became a very uh, niche, I suppose, activity yeah. and uh, focusing purely on the high end performance. I really felt like I'd missed out on the kind of social aspect of the sport because you become extremely competitive and you don't want to sail with other people because you're training and learning new tricks and things. As soon as I got on a paddleboard, I thought, oh, this is just experience driven, not technique driven. And it's that experience that is a bit like riding a bike. We, I mean, it, we call it the bicycle of the water. And that thing, I think that's what drives me on, is this passion to go get more people involved in the sport. I could get my friends paddling, I could get my family paddling, and I never took them windsurfing. So paddleboarding to me was is all about experience and showing people, sharing that experience with people. And because we do it a lot, the innovation kind of comes naturally. You go, well, it would be better if the board did this, or the bag did this, or the pump worked like this. And so it's really for our own, our own desires to get a better product that we would innovate, not necessarily thinking about who could we sell this product to it was for us you know right. as as we experience more about the sport so innovation comes from a focus and a passion of just being on the water yeah passion-led endeavors are all for always the best yeah so, yeah. yeah yeah you you mentioned a couple of things you mentioned pumps the titan 2 is an amazing pump i mean the red initial titan pump really was light years ahead of anything yeah. else that was out there the boards of course are the bags people tend to forget when they're buying an inflatable paddle board, they're buying a package. Yeah. It's not just a board. No. Uh, and the bag that you guys now have, and even the old bag is amazing. I, what's it called now? ATB? ATB, yeah. yeah. All-terrain. All-terrain bag. So the boards, the bags, the pump, all of that is, it's amazing. I don't know, how, and a five-year warranty, right? So that's, yeah. uh, last year you guys kind of got started into that. And yeah. It was always two years beforehand, yeah. but now we're into five. So we have a big team. So in our head office in the UK, it's basically split into, I suppose, different departments. But one end of the building is what we call our development center. And we have a team of design guys and girls in there. Um, and so I'm, you know, we're feeding ideas into them all the time. Um, and so we will take each product separately. So we, uh, you say it's a package, but actually it, it's, it's for three or four individual components. So we, would, mm. we do a bag project. We'll do, we'll do a board project. Um, and we'll do a pump project and we'll run them completely separately so that there is, you're not just trying to quickly make a package, you're trying to make the best pump, the best bag. So when you come to a bag, you just think, well, what does it need to do? How does it need to operate? And we design a bag, we don't design a, we don't design a, design a package if you like. So that's, part, that's partly what we do. And then from a production point of view for the boards, and that, it's pretty difficult to make a, a very good inflatable board. It's very easy to make a, a basic board. A shaped balloon. Yeah, you literally, it's a cookie cutter, you stamp out the material, you, you seam it up with some, with some glue, uh, put some deck pads on a logo and you call it a paddleboard. I think we'd call it a beach toy. Um, right. And so from a, from a board production point of view, yes, we run our own facility um, where we, we absolutely have all full control of how it's built, the way that we cut the material, the way that we bond the materials together. The time it takes, it takes 72 hours to make one of our boards. You know, you, most paddleboards are probably, you could build one and finish one and pack it up and put it in a box within a couple of hours. Uh, but we go through multiple stages of quality control, but also to set things like rocker lines, the curve on the board. Mm -hmm. It takes time to do that right. So, um, yeah, each board takes 72 hours to build. Uh, and you have to do that in your own facility. Otherwise, you'd be getting hurried out the door. Right. But we can take the time to do that. So, interesting. again, it's a bit like the first question. It's, it's driven by the passion and, and the focus on individual components and then making sure it's made correctly. Yeah. yeah. Historically, we're, we were a, a windsurfing sail maker back in the 80s and 90s. So if when it comes to stitching a bag together, very similar in right. actually stitching a sail together because the sail needs to, needs to withstand a lot of force, but also salt water and sand and all those other things. And that's what a bag does. You put a, a, a wet board in there from the sea, in the ocean, it's salty. So you need to build it with the right materials. So we've got some heritage knowledge that we can use.
The 12 foot Voyager is is a is a brilliant board because I think paddleboarding has uh, over the years become this kind of uh, one board does it all type thing or just nice and wide and fat and loads of volume but actually if you look at who's paddling right a lot of them are smaller people yep. a lot of females mm -hmm. uh, it's a fantastic uh, sport for, for everybody and I f we felt like the, the smaller rider was not being catered for once they got up to a longer board they, they, they had to pick up with a six six inch board they had to put up with a wide board uh, and we, but they're yeah. reaching like this to paddle exactly. and yeah and so we thought no, actually we with our MSL material and our RSS baton technology we can we can make a thinner board because the thicker the board the stiffer it is but then you get all kinds of stability issues as well so we can make a thinner board with our stiffening system uh, we could use our v-hull technology and our twin fin um, design to, to actually make a board that worked for smaller people, as good as the standard Voyager works for the more larger rider. Mm -hmm. And it's been fantastically uh, yeah. accepted because there's not really anything else like on the market. You had to go for a race board before, which was the wrong type of board for that type of rider. They wanted a, a nice, dependable, easy to paddle board, but it wasn't a super tippy race board. So mm -hmm. yeah, the 12 foot Voyager is a, is a, is a big one. Oh, that's good to hear. I, the 12 six Voyager, is such an awesome board for us here. It's an amazing board. Yeah. I mean, it's stable, yeah. it's still quite quick. Um, it'll take a big load if you're dealing with oceans or cross currents or whatever. It's it's a great board. Yeah. So to see that in the 12 foot yep. version, yep. I think yeah, that'll nice. be exciting to present that to market. Yeah, well, I think the the, the best thing about paddleboarding is going back to that experience driven thing. Is that once people get into it, it becomes a kind of passion. It becomes a it's not it's not technique. And I really I'm so I'm very passionate about the fact that it's not a technique driven sport. Yeah, there is some technique, and you can improve that technique. But it's about going to different places. Using using a board in different ways, and as you get better and more experience, it's it's upgrading through the through the ranks, if you like. So mm -hmm. it's maybe starting with a ten six or a ten eight ride, and then you realize, ah, I do quite like going for longer distance paddles. I do quite like going down river. So I see it's, and over the last what we've been going, this is our fourteenth year, but you know over that period we've picked up a huge amount of customers, who maybe have kept the same board for three or four years, but through recent events through the pandemic have had more time on the board, and ah, no, actually I really. I'm quite good at this now. I think I could. I think I could upgrade. And so that whole upgrading thing, I really encourage people to try the next board because it's a little bit. I'm sure it's like many sports. If you just use the same product day in day out, it feels okay. You don't know what, what you you're don't missing know. out on. You don't know what you don't know. No. And I really encourage people to try different boards because. Yeah. The, and the good thing about the red product, it, it, it lasts the test of time and it's got a great resale value. So actually, you can buy it, invest in a boarding with confidence, knowing that when it's time to upgrade, you can sell it on, mm -hmm. and you you make good money on that. And then you can you can move up the ranks. So the sports and the voyages are becoming increasingly popular as people have come through that ride experience, that all round experience. Yeah. So. I'm looking forward to trying the 11 foot wild. Mm. Yeah, uh, you know I had a 96. Yep, uh, I've had a board. The yeah, yeah, you have. That's right. Yeah. Uh, and that was a fun board. But to have a little like back on the Auto River, yeah, yeah. there's a little bit bigger waters. That yeah. 11 footer, I think, might be. Yeah, and also just a little less swimming for me. Downwind tour, down down river uh, touring, you know, like faster yeah. faster down river yeah, stuff. Yeah. It's, it's so. less sort of technical. Stuff. I think yeah. It's, yeah, it's a great board for that. Yeah. Well, John, thanks. I won't take up a whole bunch of your time. I really appreciate uh, all of the efforts that you and your whole team do. Um, you know, the North American group is really supportive of us, and uh, we're very proud to carry you know great equipment like this. So yeah, thank you very much no, for coming you. over. And I, I think it's I think what you guys do as retailers is so important for us. Is people have got to come in, they've got to feel it, they've got to touch it, they've got to talk to the experts. You know, anyone can buy anything online, but it's coming into a retailer, getting the experience of the retailer that's so important because. Yeah. You, who, who buys skis online? I, not many people. You've got to come and feel it, feel what it looked like, get them fitted. And it's kind of getting, getting a board fitted to you is, is key. So, yeah, yeah. thanks. Well, for there's passion there too. So, awesome. Thank you very much. Thank you, John. Thanks. Okay.